And please don't do this to your bags. Please, please, please don't do this to your very expensive bags. Hello, welcome, or welcome back to Classics with a Quirk, where I talk about contemporary and luxury designer items and brands with a touch of silliness. If this is the kind of content that you find interesting. Please do like this video and subscribe for more of it. Thank you. I want to preface this by saying I'm super sorry if my sound seems off. I just got a new method of filming, which is a new phone, actually and I cannot figure out how to attach or connect my mic, and I wanted to get this video filmed, and so I just went micless. So I'm sorry if the sound is a little bit weird today. I'm trying to figure it out. Uh, it's a process. I'm still pretty new to YouTube, so I am gonna hopefully have that figured out for the next video, you know, hopefully. In this video, I wanted to address a topic that's really been on my mind a lot, and that is things that you really, really shouldn't do to your expensive luxury handbags, especially in terms of like storing them and caring for them. Because I've seen some stuff on YouTube that really worries me in terms of the longevity of the bag, and you are free to treat your goods and things however you want to, obviously, but if you want to preserve the longevity of your item, the quality of your item, you do want to treat it with care, especially in terms of storing it, because if you're not using the bag, then it is being stored in some way, and the way you store it really does have an impact on how the bag wears in the long term. So I just wanted to address some do's and some very much don'ts in terms of storing and caring for your luxury handbags, and like, just for some of these, like, please, please, please don't do this if you want your bag to last a long time. Now the first thing I wanted to address and kind of get out of the way is something that I see all too often when it comes to Chanel, specifically the Chanel Classic Flaps and the Chanel Reissues. Now I have a Chanel Reissue here and it is a classic Chanel Reissue in that it has the double flap and that is what I wanted to talk about first off. This part here, this, this back part here is not a pocket. It is not a pocket and please don't treat it as a pocket if you want your bag to last a long time. I will explain. So the Chanel double flap is, it is a classic design that goes back decades and decades. And it was designed as a way to kind of have like extra security and privacy for the items inside the bag. So once you open the first flap, you still have like this extra layer to protect your items from pickpockets and all that stuff, but it's also in part to uh, protect the integrity and shape of the bag. Now mine does have a bit of a point, but this bag is also from 2005, and I'm going to get to points and storage later in terms of like the bag shape, but right now I just want to talk about this flap here and this part here. Now the design for the classic flaps and the classic reissues is the double flap design, and it is a bag in a bag design. So essentially you have the outer bag here and then the inner bag here, this, this flap here. So you can see here that this part, this flap is stitched to this area over here. And then this flap kind of goes all the way down in, into this seam. So they're, they're connected in the seam and this flap is separate from this flap. This is important to know because if you put things in this pocket, what you are doing is you are putting pressure, you're putting strain on this seam here in between these two flaps. You are putting a pressure and a strain. And what that will do is that will create pop stitches. It will separate these stitches here from each other and you will, and you will damage the bag. You will cause those stitches to pop or break. And you will also often like stretch out the back of the bag here because this part is meant to be flat. There's nothing that, things are not supposed to go back here. You might be able to slip some letters or things like that, but like a cell phone is definitely too bulky for what this area, this this part was designed for. It's 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 kind of meant to be left alone or to have like receipts in it. And, and you know, when these bags were originally created, people didn't have bulky cell phones and things that went into our pockets and our bags, and they weren't designed to hold bulky things like cell phones and, and big thick wallets and stuff like that. So the more pressure you put on this area in between here, the more you put in there, the, the more strain you're going to cause and the more likely you are to pop a stitch. And that is sometimes repairable by Chanel or a third party like Leather Surgeons. And sometimes you will irreparably damage the bag because you are going to damage the leather on the inside. So I would just really recommend not utilizing what isn't a pocket and protecting the integrity of the bag by 
leaving that area alone. Another thing in regards to the classic flap is a storage technique that I actually see utilized in, in boutiques as well as in personal collections. And it is a method that I do not recommend and I will explain why and I will also demonstrate the method and not freak out while I do it because I'm only gonna be doing it for a very short time. And that method is lifting up the inner flap, pulling the chain all the way through so it's flat on the top and then lifting up the second flap and tucking the chain into the bag like that. So you basically have pulled the chain all the way through here. So it's kind of flat on the top. You've tucked it into the side and then it rests inside the bag. And what you have as a result is, is you know, a, a very lovely way to display the bag with the chains on the top or hanging in the back out of the way and then just pulled through unobtrusively. But this is actually pretty bad for your bag and for the chain, especially for the classic flap chains which have the leather interwoven in them because what you are doing when you pull the chains through here is that you are rubbing the metal and leather a lot on this corner of the bag here and putting a lot of wear on it and especially if you do this often and you move it in and you move it out and you move it in and you move it out that's a lot of friction that goes on this leather corner and it's a way to wear the leather edge down and and even break the leather through you also are going to be putting wear on the leather strap in between the chain of the classic flap by putting it in and putting it out and putting it in and putting it out. And that also will put, you know, wear and strain on that part of the leather too. Furthermore, when you do this and you pull the chains through like this and hold it down, you leave the chains sitting on top of the bag and that actually can cause indentations in the leather as well, especially in a lambskin bag, but it also isn't unheard of for caviar and other leathers to have these indentations, to acquire these indentations too. So really what you want to do when you are storing a, a bag like this is if you are storing it with the chain inside, you really want to wrap the handles, but the best method to storing a classic flap is to not store the chain inside the bag at all. You really want to keep the chain outside of the bag and then use your storage technique to wrap the chain or hold the chain away from the bag. So for what I recommend when it is a double flap and you cannot store the chain inside the bag, or I, I think you shouldn't store the chain inside the bag, is that you should make sure that you wrap the chain in some way, or if nothing else, use a dust bag or a cloth on the bag itself to provide some sort of barrier between the chain and the bag. Like obviously this is a kind of a slapdash method, but if you, you know, lay it nicely, you can you can have the chain like falling in a way that it doesn't touch the leather, or you can also wrap the chains. If you get a modern classic flap or modern reissue, you get the white dust bag that has actually a flap inside of it that you can use to store the chain. So what you would do is you put the bag in one hand, one half, where the where Coco Chanel is and then you would take the chain and put it in the other flap and then you can flip it over so the chains don't rest on the bag itself or at least they're somewhat protected. You can also wrap the chains in tissue paper. It kind of depends on what you want to do in order to protect your bag but also maybe have it easily accessible. And I do understand that some of these methods might make the bag a little less accessible and e less easy to use and access and that that is fairly valid. If your storage method keeps you from using your bag, then it, a different storage method is, in, is important because you want to be able to use the bags and not have to be like, oh, I have to take it out of the packaging. I have to move it here. I have to do this. So it, it kind of is a, you know, figure out what works best for you. What works best for me is having a layer of cloth that folds down and provides a barrier between the chain and the leather. And that's what works best for me for the double flap type of bag. Some people do hang their bags from the chain strap and that is something that I do not recommend either because as I mentioned before, you will get a point. Now the purpose of the double flap, aside from the privacy element, is to help maintain the shape and integrity of the bag. You have this flap that helps preserve this, you know, part from squishing in. But if you hang your chain, the more you use your chain, you know, either from using it on your shoulder and wearing it or from hanging the chain, the more the leather is going to point. And you can work with that and every time you use it, you can massage the leather back down and work on the, the point. But as your bag ages and as you wear it, it is more prone to pointing because the leather does soften and get more malleable. If you hang it as you store it, the leather is going to get more and more used to sitting in this position, 
which means that it is more and more likely to point over time. And I've actually seen backs point very quickly from the hanging method, and it is not something that I recommend if your chains go through the flap. So hanging methods can be really actually good if you're if you're, it's like a rectangular mini, depending, and the the chain is attached through the loops. But with this particular bag, you see how the chain goes through here, so that's the only support it has. Hanging this kind of bag is only going to point the leather. I'm going to stop doing that now because I don't want to. Finally, another thing that I see for people who have Chanel bags that have the zipper inside, either a Chanel wallet on chain or a, a classic flap, what have you, the zipper inside, something that I really see a lot is improper treatment of the zipper in storage. And what I mean is not using some sort of barrier between the flap and the zipper and with the classic flaps also between the chain and the zipper. Because the bottom line is how these bags were designed, you have several parts of them that dig into the leather and rub against the leather constantly. And the more you have something rubbing against leather, the more likely the leather is to wear and soften and sometimes eventually rip. So you really want to do everything you can to avoid this, this continual wear of, of this flap. So what you really want to do is you really want to get some sort of barrier, like a felt piece. And a lot of these bags do come with felt pieces in their packaging, or you can often request them from your sales associates. If you're buying a bag pre-loved or it doesn't come with a felt piece, you can always buy felt and make this yourself. But what you really want to do is have this felt piece in between the flaps, tuck it down, make sure the zipper is tucked in and flat, and only then close the bag for storage. And that way you have the felt protecting the inner layer of leather from the zipper digging into it and from the chains digging into it. And you'll actually notice for older pieces or not very well kept pieces that you're going to have some smoothing of leather where the chains are. And you'll even sometimes see like deep grooves or scratches, especially in, in lambskin pieces. And that is really from improper storage and time. Now you can't stop time. These bags are going to age and they can age beautifully if you store them and treat them right. But if you are using improper storage methods, they are much more likely to break down and wear through. Another thing I really strongly recommend if you have a classic flap, double flap with this button, the snap, is to either make sure that you have another piece of felt to cover the snap when you store it, or to not completely close the bag when you store it. Don't, don't completely close it. And that is because the snap pushes against the leather every time the bag is fully closed. That was just how it was designed. This part here and this part here will push against each other. And if you don't have it snapped all the way shut, which is honestly kind of tricky to do and a little annoying and futzy, if you don't have it snapped all the way shut, this part won't meet this part all the way and it will press into the leather above it. And if you have a metal piece pressing constantly into a piece of leather, the metal piece will eventually create an indentation just like the zipper will create an indentation. And eventually that will wear through and create a hole in the leather. And holes in leather are much less repairable than say a pop stitch because you can re-sew a pop stitch, but once the leather has broken, it's very, very difficult, if not impossible, to repair. So those are just some things that I wanted to share in terms of storing a Chanel classic flap or a classic reissue. Now, a lot of these things actually also apply to the Chanel wallet on chain, and that is because the Chanel wallet on chain also has a zipper. Now you'll notice that my Chanel wallet on chain has something covering the zipper and a piece of tissue paper covering the fold down zipper as well. And that is because even though I've had the Chanel wallet on chain for quite some time now, since 2020, I am very careful about how I treat the zippers because you can often see the zipper is creating a divot in the leather down here, and that's regardless of whether it's lambskin or caviar. And I have seen Chanel walks having with this leather piece actually broken through, especially with older pieces. Now the new version of the Chanel wall on chain, these zippers actually fold down, they're metal zippers that fold in place, and I think that's really awesome. Like, so they're not as uh, wiggly woggly as the previous zippers, and they're much more likely to stay in place because they fold down in place. But still, if you don't cover the zipper, it's going to rub against the leather, push into the leather, and the more it pushes against the leather, the more it is going to wear the leather down. 
and weaken it and weaken the structure of the leather and that will again damage it. So whenever I store my Chanel Wallentain I make sure that I kept the, I, it's so silly, but I kept the little um, piece that covers the zipper when I first bought it and I also kept this you know, tissue paper piece. And so I always store it like that. And if I had an older style Chanel wallet on chain, the kind with the snap button closure, I wouldn't actually snap it closed to store it. I would leave it open in the same way that I would leave the classic flap snap unsnapped. But with the magnetic closure, it meets it instantaneously, which is actually really nice. It's just that you, you can't really leave it open unless you kind of make sure that it's open because if you close it at all, it'll just snap shut. So I just suggest taking precautions in terms of covering the zipper, both on the top and in the side to make sure that the zipper is protected from the leather and vice versa. Now another thing I see in regards to the Chanel walk and in other bags too this applies to all bags but with the Chanel walk it's just something that I see a lot and I don't suggest is stuffing it. Now the Chanel walk is a beautiful little piece that has a divot on the bottom that folds up and you can stand it up on, you can stand it up this way or you can stand it on its side and you can even hang it if you want to, although I wouldn't suggest it, but you could. This is a small bag and it doesn't need stuffing. It is a very structured piece and it doesn't need anything inside of it to hold its shape unless you like lie it on its side. It's not going to really deflate, especially if you take care of it properly. It's not that it's too small to sag, but its size coupled with its built-in rigidity it's got a lot of support and structure in this little thing and that makes it a lot more likely to stand up on its own for a long, 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 long time. But I see people stuffing these and if you stuff a lock that's already so small and is already so structured, you are much, much more likely to damage the leather, stretch out the leather and bend the walk out of shape. And you, once you stretch out leather, it cannot be unstretched. It's, you, you stretch mark, uh, you stretch mark skin, it can't, lose those stretch marks it can't be unstretched so stretching a leather piece out is damaging it to a point that it can't be repaired at least in that capacity now there are several different ways that people stuff their bags and i utilize these ways too you have bubble wrap you have like tissue paper type paper and air paper these like things that come in you know packages that are just filled with air and very thin plastic and i am a huge proponent of stuffing your bags in order to keep their shape because if you have a bag that doesn't have stuffing in it and it sits empty, the weight of the bag itself will cause it to slowly collapse over time. Regardless of how structured it is, and sometimes even because it's very structured and big, like a Chanel Jumbo, the larger it is and the more weight it has built into it, if it's standing up on its own, the weight of the bag itself without any support will slowly cause it to collapse. And there are multiple ways to prevent this from happening. And one of those ways is to stuff it properly. And that means not overstuffing it, and it means not using a stuffing method that could damage the bag in some way. So when it comes to a Chanel Wallet Unchained, for instance, using air paper, it, it just won't work. The air paper is thicker than the Wallet Unchained, and if you put the air paper in it, you're going to just stretch out the leather to bursting, and it's not going to be good for the bag. In the same way, bubble wrap is kind of hard to control because you either have one layer of it and it's not enough or you have two layers of it or three layers of it and it's too much it's kind of hard to get a happy middle ground i don't stuff my walks at all because they're just they're so small and structured that i feel like putting stuffing into them is only going to harm the integrity of the bag itself what i do do however because my walk does have the chain inside you'll notice is that i do have a piece of tissue paper inside my walk here and I place the chain on top of the tissue paper. So I actually have like kind of like a, a cradle of tissue paper specifically for the chain. And that is so the chain doesn't leave indentations in the leather itself. And just, that's just the weight of the chain pushing into the leather from how it's stored. So what I do is when I store my walk, I have, you know, the chain. I have this piece of tissue paper that actually did come packaged with it. And I put the tissue paper inside so there's like a U here and then I take the chain and I place it inside that little tissue paper cradle so it's held between those pieces of tissue paper and there's like a base on the bottom and that way their walk chain is less likely to indent the leather inside the bag. Now it doesn't super matter to me if I do have some in chain indentations at the bottom of a walk but it is something that I do think about and if I have the capacity to do it and prevent those indentations and it doesn't stop me from grabbing the bag and using it like just taking the tissue paper out 
putting it back when I'm done with it, then I might as well. It's going to help prolong the life of the bag and help keep it in the best way possible. I'm gonna just like put the tissue paper back and then put it back over here. Finally, I wanted to address actually an unusual storage method that I do use for quite a few of my bags, especially the ones that have chains on the top. And I'm going to use this bag as a demonstration because this is one that I, I use it all the time for, regardless of display. Like I have this stored this way when I have it not being used by me. Now this bag is a vintage Chanel piece and it's made of lambskin. It is beautiful and very buttery soft, very supple. And that is something to keep in mind because lambskin will dent easier than caviar. Caviar will dent. If you don't treat it right, caviar will dent, but lambskin is much more likely to show indentations faster. And this bag is also pretty similar to a rectangular mini, and it's got the same kind of strap in that it's attached on the inside here with little hooks, just like the rectangular mini. So I'm going to talk about this kind of as if I would be recommending storage for rectangular mini. And especially since rectangular minis are now in lambskin only, this is very relevant to them. And this is what I wanted to talk about. So when you have a bag that just has this one strap here and it's attached in on the side, you don't have the same issue of pulling the strap in and damaging the side of the bag because it's already made that way. So if you didn't want to hang this bag from a hook, you could. I, I personally wouldn't, but if you wanted to hang it from a hook, that, that would be fine. It wouldn't damage the integrity of the bag because it wouldn't be putting pressure on the flap because the chain is attached to this part of the bag, not the flap, so it's not pulling the flap up in the same way that with a double flap it would. You even could take the chains in this way with like a, a ribbon or a chain adjustment hope thing and attach them this way and then hang it from the top and that way you could, you could hang it without issue and it, it wouldn't damage the integrity of the bag. I, I don't do that, but it is something that I don't have a problem with. And I don't have a problem with any of you doing whatever you want with your bags, obviously. This is just my recommendations and my observations of some things that people do do and some things that people do do that will damage the things sooner or later. But, but you know, do whatever you want in terms of how you store your bag. These are just my recommendations in terms of, you know, prolonging the life and the leather of these very expensive pieces. So what I do for this kind of bag, this shape and style with this type of chain, and I will do this for classic flaps as well, and I do this exact same thing for my uh, sweet classic flap. So this is just, <laughs> bear with me, is I do, first of all, I do stuff it. So I do have something in it to support the shape so it doesn't collapse in on itself, which is much more likely to happen with lambskin or a softer caviar. But I do, again, I do stuff my caviar bags too. So I stuff it, I make sure the chain is on the inside of the bag as much as I can get it. I close it and then I, I turn it on its side. And this does a few different things to almost 100% guarantee the integrity of your bag for a very long time and I will explain. First of all, the chain, it does prevent the chain from lying on the lambskin leather and leaving indentations, which is pretty important. But second of all, it puts all of the pressure and weight of the bag on its side where it is most reinforced and structured. If you have your bag, especially an older bag, especially the lambskin bag or a bigger one, honestly, you have it sitting on its base, it's going to sag down and these sides are rigid and reinforced, but this part is going to press in and it's going to just kind of slowly collapse in on itself over time. Now, using stuffing will help prevent that, using inserts will help prevent that, but if you just leave the bag on its own, it's going to naturally sag down. Skin does sag down over time. We get wrinkles, we lose elasticity. It's going to fall. However, if you sit it on its side, you have it completely rigid here because it's got the reinforced base bottom. Uh, and all rectangular minis do have like a reinforced base bottom. The Chanel Walk does, the Classic Flaps do. It's got that reinforced base bottom. The sides are rigid and structured because that's where all the stitches are. This part is also rigid and structured because it's the other side, so it's got the stitches too. And the flap is rigid and structured. And so it's not pulling the bag this way where it's got less support. It's holding the bag this way where it has much more support on it. Furthermore, if you have the bag sitting this way, again, it's much more likely to collapse in and down, like in and down. But if you have it this way, you're not putting any of that pressure on the softest parts of the bag, which is this part. This is one of the softest parts of the bag, which is 
you know, not enforced at all. And if you leave it on its side, you are making sure that you don't have pressures placed on areas of the bag that are much more likely to get damaged over time. Now, I do understand that this is kind of a very unusual method, and I actually learned this method a while back from my grandfather's things, which is a vintage Chanel dealer who mostly deals with vintage Chanel Dianas and who has a huge, huge knowledge base on vintage Chanel leathers and the care and treatment of these leathers that's collected over years and years of working with it. And I do trust their opinion on how they treat their leathers because it is their business, but it is also like their passion. And I have had nothing but good things to say about the methods that I've used in regards to what I've learned from them. So they're on Instagram, my grandfather's thing. So it's, you know, they're cool to check out. They also do auctions for vintage bags, if that's something that you're interested in. I personally have never dealt with any of their auctions, but they have glowing reviews. So I have no problem recommending them. I'm also on Instagram. I'm classics with a quirk, all one word. If you ever feel like saying hello, I'm trying to get better at Instagram, but if you want to just DM me and have a chat, I am always available to do that, especially if you have questions or want to talk about something like bags because I enjoy talking about bags. In regards to questions, if you have any other questions that you'd like me to address or feel that I haven't addressed, please feel free to leave a comment down below or send me a message again on Instagram. I'd love to make a follow-up video if there's enough people who are interested in a follow-up video, so just please let me know again. I'm also interested in making another video on the care and storage of Louis Vuitton pieces, so if that's something that you're interested in, also let me know. I just kind of want to gauge interest here in doing that. And in general, I do hope that you enjoy this video, that these tips were helpful to you, or if there's something that you have learned, please feel free to tell me because I'm always interested in learning more. If you like this video, please do give it a like because it super duper helps the algorithm and subscribe for more content because it helps the algorithm even more. Thank you so much for watching and I'll see you next time. Bye.